Good morning dear friends and greetings to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is another good day God has given us. You know the days are God's precious gift to us and to live our life also is God's gift to us. Our life is the most precious gift. And so let us begin this day with the meditation of a scripture passage found in the book of Hebrews chapter 3 verse 12. and our today's meditation is centered around this particular verse he reads like this see to it brothers that none of you has a sinful unbelieving heart that turns away from the living god now that is a very important verse many people make this mistake we we possess a sinful unbelieving heart and we do not have a, our eyes fixed on Jesus the author and finisher of our faith don't make my mistake since man was created with a free will he has the freedom to choose for himself whatever he wants and it is this freedom that both eve and adam uh, used when they ate the fruit of the forbidden tree and fell from the grace and favor of god by new birth we become new creations but that new creations does not mean that our freedom our our free will freedom is removed from us no it is still there in each one of us and god therefore has not made us like a puppet or like any other animal who function uh, which functions only by instinct you and i are blessed with this unique gift of free will freedom to f- to to choose for ourselves and god expects that we use it profitably not for our disadvantage but for our own advantage and blessing our words for our meditation today shows this truth the exhortation in this verse is a proof of this truth that that free will uh, ability free will freedom is still there intact in us and uh, it is a uh, this verse is a proof of that because the verse says see to it brothers that none of you has a sinful and believing heart that is something that you and i have to choose our words for our meditation therefore is centered around this shows this truth the exhortation in this verse is a is a proof that we are blessed with this freedom to choose and it is still there because we are born again and we are a new creation now uh, the old create uh, the freedom is taken away from us no 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 that freedom is still there as believers we need to exercise that and uh, and and the instruction in this verse that we read says you and i have to make a choice to protect ourselves from personal apostasy because many people come to faith but then they fall into the temptation to apostate and uh, go back and such people are called uh they fell into the temptation of apostasy um the uh, my purpose this morning is to uh, speak to you about the steps that leads a person towards such apostasy and leave our faith and go back there are steps and i will only mention them with one or two scripture passages for each 
so I don't give much explanation because of the limited time we are using for this meditation. There are about five steps that lead to apostasy. Number one, lack of seriousness in believers through unbelief, accept the truths and exhortation, warnings, promises and teaching of God's word with a strong determination. We don't show any seriousness in accepting these things that I have mentioned. And they do that through unbelief. Believers fall into this sin of unbelief. You know, we have doubt. Doubt can be cleared. But unbelief is a deliberate decision that we make to leave God out of our life. And reject God. That was the sin that the Pharisees and the leaders of the Jewish uh, nation committed during the time of Jesus. And uh, the scripture passage I want you to look into is Mark chapter 1 verse 15 and Luke chapter 8 verse 13, John chapter 5 verses 44 and 47, and again John chapter 8 verse 46 and I hope you got these verses please read these verses after this meditation so this is the first step a lack of seriousness in believers how through unbelief to accept God's truth the exhortations and the warning and the promises and the teaching of God's word. One needs to have a very strong determination like Daniel. He determined in his heart that he was not going to defile himself by eating the food of Babylonian. That he, 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 he determined he made a resolution and he remained res uh, res uh, to that resolution very strongly until the end. And the second step that leads to apostasy is it is our choice to draw near to God through study of God's word and prayer. But what happened is we grow cold as the realities of the world become greater than the realities of God's kingdom. And this causes believers slowly to cease to draw near to God through Christ. Why did God choose us? He chose, he chose us that we may be with Him all the time. How do we remain with God? Through the studying of the scriptures, through prayer and through meditation. And by obeying His word. The scripture passages is Hebrews chapter 4 verse 16. And then again Hebrews chapter 7 verse 19 and verse 25. And also Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. Read these passages. Number three, step number three. Through the deceitfulness of a sin, believers and churches also become increasingly tolerant of a sin in their lives. And they try to rationalize and justify their actions and their practices. Instead of discerning and distinguishing between what is evil and what is uh, godly and what is from Satan and what is from God, instead of distinguishing and understanding, they simply give in that temptation of becoming cold 
and we begin to slowly slowly we begin to tolerate worldliness and sinfulness into our churches that's how churches are destroyed and become ineffective and also individual believers we also see all these things and we say well uh, i don't think it is such a big thing and what is wrong with this show me from the scriptures you shall not smoke and and all these kind of things we slowly become succumb to this kind of coldness don't allow that and we no longer love righteousness and holiness and do not hate wickedness my brothers and sisters if you are listening to me please remember spirituality is hate what god hates disapprove what god disapproves god said i hate divorce and i must hate to divorce because my god hate it and there are number of things like that god hate he he doesn't approve he said homosexuality is a, is a curse and an abomination in the sight of god now that doesn't mean that we have we don't have to love homosexual we must love them and pray for them and minister to them and try to bring them back that love of god must be exercised by us but as far as hating is concerned god hates sin while he loves sinners you hate homosexuality but you love such young people and elderly people save them what god hates you hate what god disapproves you disapprove god, what god approves you approve what god stands for you stand for and that is what that determination must be there that step must be taken first corinthians chapter 6 verses 9 and 10 write it down and then ephesians chapter 5 verse 5 and then hebrews chapter 3 verse 13 also hebrews chapter 1 verse 9 read all these verses and fourthly if we allow our hearts become hard by continuously disobeying god's word and reject god's way and ignore god's way and ignore the repeated voice of god and the rebuke of the holy spirit i hope you are listening carefully what i am say- saying that is the next step that will lead you into apostasy and lose your relationship with god Don't let it happen my friends I plead with you it is not worth Scripture passages Ephesians chapter 4 verse 30 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verses 19 to 22 And lastly the fifth step towards apostasy the holy spirit is grieved by our actions or inaction we fail to act righteously and we fail to obey the holy spirit's prompting and his inner voice Ephesians chapter 4 verse 30 Hebrews chapter 3 verse 78 write it down and not only we grieve the holy spirit but the fire of the holy spirit is is is, is put out as first corinthians chapter 3 verse 16 says and the first thessalonians chapter 5 verse 19 and our bodies the temple of the lord 
is violated. See, you must understand individually our bodies, believer, individual believer's body also is temples of the living God. And we need to protect this temple from being violated. But a local church also is a temple of God which must reflect the light of Jesus Christ to that city or village where you are placed. And all these things, you know, grieving the Holy Spirit and quenching the fire of the Holy Spirit within us and uh, violating our bodies because it is our uh, it is his temple all these things will result in the departure of the Holy Spirit from the believer you need to understand that that's how the Holy Spirit lives you know this was the greatest burden of David he was so afraid that after he sinned against the Lord uh, uh, by committing adultery with the Bathsheba. You read the 51st Psalm. He said, Lord, create in me a clean heart. And, and, and then he says, take not your Holy Spirit from me. Why? Restore in me a new heart, the joy of salvation. He is pleading with why for a moment he succumbed to the temptation and he failed and his fear was if the Holy Spirit is taken away from me then I have no hope because it is the Holy Spirit that bring me conviction and if the Spirit of God is absent then the conviction will not be there then there will be no repentance and I go further into the darkness of sin that is why pleading take not your Holy Spirit from me O God and if you cold if you feel cold in your faith if you in your love and if you think that your faith is falling uh, and uh, you are growing cold to the things of God and uh, lazy in the matters of God in pursuing after the living God you don't feel any energy to do that and if you are beginning to feel that my friends it is a it is a signal uh, of danger ahead do not succumb to it come on get right with God and begin to repent and begin to call out to God Lord take not your spirit from me restore in me the joy of salvation again take not your spirit from me O God cry out and David was restored and he was blessed you know Psalm read Psalm number 50 51 verse 11 Romans chapter 8 verse 13 first Corinthians chapter 3 verses 16 and 17 these verses shows the right thing to do what is true of a believer can also be true of any local church. So my brothers and sisters, let's be watchful and pray. Let's be watchful and pray. That's what Jesus said, watch and pray. The enemy is coming to destroy and he knows when you are lax, when you are lazy, you to pray and read the word of God and be filled with the Holy Spirit. You know, He knows, and through that He will come in, and you become cold, and you, become a, you have no more enthusiasm for the things of God, or no more desire for the matters of God, and you are lost. Let it not happen to you. Rise up. Let your light shine forth. May the Lord bless you as you determine to be true to God and follow him. Father, in the name of Jesus, bless everyone who listened to this message that they may set things right in your sight and they may receive the Holy Spirit's anointing once again and that you be merciful to them and, 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 and be favorable to them. 
let the favor of the lord be upon you my brother my sister god loves you he wants you to be strong in him amen this is another new day a wonderful day enjoy this day and have a wonderful great day amen